I just couldn't imagine. You, you, you see, not many of my colleagues at that stage had the opportunity to see what I saw. So, exactly. The professionalism. When I was growing up and in the high school, uh, one Mr. Shutade, I think, he was my, my art teacher. Uh, I had two of them, Mr. Dara and Mr. Shutade. That Mr. Shutade showed me how to mount my work. He said, even if your work is not that good, but give it good mounting before you put it in the frame. And it will look professional and very nice. And you will be able to sell it for a higher, higher amount. He taught, he taught me that while still in high school. So when I saw his work, I just thought about that. Even without frames, the, the works are already singing to me. Right? So I was very impressed by and motivated and said, This is what I want to do in life. So before my. Before I passed out of uh, Compressive High School, I, to, I was going to Talents at Tinobu Square to buy my art materials. I bought the books, what are Foster books. I bought all the books. <laughs> all my pocket money I spent it on the, even, I wasn't even thinking about riding back home. Oh, okay. I was thinking, how am I going to get home? Because these books are so fantastic, I'm going to buy everything. I bought the Rapidograph pens, I bought the Crocoil pens to do professional cartooning. I was just preparing myself. You were all in already. I was I in. I was ready. At that time. I didn't care. No I didn't care time. if I ate. Right. I would be hungry, but I would I wouldn't feel hungry. Because my all my mind was getting myself to, to be able to draw as professional and to be proficient in that. So So when, when did the so when you got this background, yes. uh, where did you formally train then? After you have all this, I'll call it wealth of experience, yes. because it looks like it's an apprenticeship. Yes. So it seems like by the time you finish your apprentice work yes. with the great uh, cartoonists, mm -hmm. when did you decide that it was time to come to the United States or did you go somewhere else First, well, before you came to the state, one thing led, led to the other. Okay. Right. So, Dr. Dele Jekede was not only my mentor, but he was one of them. Okay. The one who actually put the fire under me was Kenny Adams. You know, staying with him was like torture because he will pressure you. Right. But it was for good, because it was training me to be able to think, to be able to visualize and say, okay, the man fell down. So because he fell down, should I draw him falling down? Does that make sense as a visual? A, a, a man is carrying somebody heavy on a, on a bicycle. How do you express the bicycle that the bicycle is in pain and pressure, under pressure? How do you draw the bicycle raggedy to show that that the person on it is creating that uh, inconvenience? That is visualization. So it started to trigger me to be able to think deeper and harder. When Obasanjo brought out the uh, austerity, austerity measures and then they downsized their vehicle to smaller Pojo cars, from Mercedes-Benz, Kenny Adams in draw, drew uh, Obasanjo carrying a uh, uh, push cart, right? And then the, we wrote austerity, austerity measure there. That is imaginative and also it's um, idiomatic, right? Okay. It's an expression. And he doesn't even need to put caption there. The cartoon speaks right, for so. itself. So that's how I started my journey. And then from 17 year old till 10 years later, until 1989, I was working as a cartoonist for Punch and for Concord newspaper, working for Delegiwa. What prompted me to leave uh, the shores of Nigeria? Many things. A lot of things happened. 
and then a lot of disappointments. You do some cartoons, people will love it, but people will still vote for the wrong person. And then the wrong people get there and they don't know what to do. So you keep recycling this wrong people who be giving themselves accolades and giving themselves, uh, what do you call it? Marking their own exam and erasing their mistakes and correcting it and saying they did well. So I was very, very uh, concerned about that. And I was now into music. By, 2000, by 1984, 85, I released my first album through Decca Aphrodisia. I was not much experienced in music, but I had a lot of knowledge by going out to test myself okay. at Kabambam Bobby Benson's Hotel. Okay. So that's where I met my Jack Fashek, Amos McCroy, um, Black Rice, and Kimono, Ras Kimono. That's where we started, and we started to come at, at night. We have night gigs, and people will come. But they were not businessmen, so they were not making a lot of money. Okay. But I had my job. I was working for National Concord newspaper. So I became like a mentor, business person, helping them here and there, something like that. So at that point, yes, will you say your musical talent, yes, has equal? Because I will assume that you were more advanced with your. Cartooning and, uh, cartooning and the other stuff. Yeah, right. Then you were just bringing up your I was just bringing up my musical background, background bought my saxophone, right. got somebody to train me, Chris Agilo, okay. uh, Showboy, you know, those people who are already up front doing things. I started using, you know, get, gathering ideas from them, then went to train myself. Okay. Because I already, I already made myself to be able to train myself how to draw, how to do everything. The day my strokes became professional, I knew that day. Because I was just drawing. And not thinking anymore. And not thinking anymore. And then the, th the thing just came up on the paper. I said, woo! <laughs> like that. It wasn't lazy. My lines wasn't lazy anymore. Then I started doing it more. I said, I'm not, I, I will not stop. Because if I stop, the thing might disappear from yeah. my hands. So I started doing it more. And then I started doing incredible strokes. This thing coming out and say. This is wonderful. And uh, uh, when I go to parties, I will stand out. Because I'll be more like, oh, I'm a fella. <laughs> That's a fella guy, right? And I'll be like, I'm not, I'm shocked. These guys should be doing the same thing I'm doing. But they're not, you know. So, uh, I was kind of, ready in my mind that this is what I want to do right from that age but Yoruba was far from it until I got to the United States